Inside the alveoli of our lungs, we have a special type of substance known as the pulmonary surfactant that consists of phospholipids and proteins. And what the pulmonary surfactant does is it decreases the surface tension of the fluid found inside the alveoli of our lungs and that decreases the pressure that is needed to actually inflate those alveoli during the process of inhalation. So it decreases the pressure needed to expand or inflate the alveoli when we actually inhale when we breathe in. It also prevents the alveoli from actually collapsing onto themselves when we actually exhale. So overall, what the surfactant in the alveoli of the lungs does is it makes the process of breathing much more efficient and much more easy to carry out. Now, the question is why and how? How does the surfactant actually carry out these two functions? Well, to answer this question, we have to begin by answering question number one and question number two. If we understand these two questions and the answer to these two questions, we'll have no problem actually understanding how the surfactant in the alveoli actually works. So let's begin with question number one. An individual droplet of water placed on the tabletop will basically form a spherical shape as shown in diagram A. If we then add a tiny drop of detergent using some type of pipette onto that droplet of water, that droplet of water will basically break and collapse its spherical shape and will flatten out and spread out along the surface of the table as shown in diagram B. The question is why does this actually take place? How does our detergent actually break and cause the water droplet to actually collapse its shape? So let's begin with diagram A and let's actually answer why the water actually forms that spherical shape in the first place. So if we examine inside that water droplet, if we get down to the microscopic level, we'll see that the individual water molecules are actually forming relatively strong intermolecular bonds known as hydrogen bonds. So water can form many hydrogen bonds with adjacent water molecules. Now, because hydrogen bonding is stabilizing, that means the water will tend to create a shape that will maximize the number of hydrogen bonds. And it turns out that this spherical shape has the highest volume to surface area ratio and it creates an optimal arrangement of molecules that creates a maximum amount of hydrogen bonds. And that's exactly why why the water forms that spherical shape in the first place. So pure water has a high surface tension. Now in diagram B, when we take our pipette that contains our detergent and we release a small amount onto the water, that water breaks its spherical shape, it collapses and spreads out and flattens out along the surface of the table. The question is why? Well, what exactly is a detergent? A detergent is basically some type of oil that contains hydrophobic nonpolar sections and hydrophilic polar sections. And when we add our detergent to the water, the polar section of our detergent will try to interact with the water and that will break the intermolecular bonds between water molecules and the nonpolar will try to orient itself as far away from the water and that will also break intermolecular bonds. So by adding our detergent that contains hydrophobic and hydro Philic regions, we essentially break many of those intermolecular bonds that are needed to create the spherical shape. And that's exactly why our water essentially collapses and spreads out along the surface of our table. Now let's move on to question number two. 
So pure water, as I mentioned earlier, has a relatively high surface tension. So in diagram A, before we added our detergent, we had a relatively high surface tension. Now, when we add our detergent, we decrease the surface tension of that liquid. The question is why? Well, to begin, let's actually define what surface tension is. So surface tension basically means that the molecules found on the surface of the liquid remain on the surface and they're able to bond very well with adjacent liquid molecules. In the case of water, it's adjacent water molecules. And so when we try to apply a force onto the surface of that liquid, because of these relatively strong intermolecular bonds and because the molecules on the surface don't actually move too much, those molecules are able to actually stand their ground when a force is applied onto that surface. So surface tension means that it is relatively difficult to break the bonds that exist on the surface of that liquid. And this implies that the bonds on the surface of our water are strong and the water molecules on the surface don't actually move too much and so they can stand their ground when a force is applied on them. So if we zoom in on the surface of the water in diagram A, we basically get the following picture. So let's compare the water molecules found deep inside that droplet and the water molecules found on the surface. So deep inside our water droplet, these molecules can easily move around. And that's because if they move from one location to a different location, it doesn't matter where they are within the water droplet, anywhere they are, they still are surrounded by a cage of other water molecules and that always creates intermolecular bonds. So beneath the surface of the water, the molecules can move around freely because by doing so, they are not losing any hydrogen bonds. So in this location, the water molecule creates one, two, three, four, five, six of these bonds. Now when it moves somewhere else, it will create those same six bonds because it is always surrounded by water. Now let's take a look on the surface. On the surface of our water, there is a change of phase. We have air that is right above our surface. And what that means is these water molecules on the surface will have a limited number of hydrogen bonds because they cannot actually bond with the air molecules. They can only bond with the adjacent water molecules. And so if we take a look at this particular water molecule, we only have one, two, three of these hydrogen bonds. Now, whenever our water molecule moves or rotates from the surface, it will lose those hydrogen bonds. But it doesn't want to lose those hydrogen bonds because hydrogen bonds are stabilizing. So because on the surface we have this air phase and because the molecules cannot interact with the air molecules that means the water molecules on the surface will be constrained to that location they will not be able to move as freely as the molecules inside our water because by moving or rotating on the surface they lose those precious hydrogen bonds and we only have a limited number of hydrogen bonds on the surface so on the the surface of the water, the water molecules are more restricted. That is because they cannot interact well with the air molecules above and even the smallest rotational movement can cause them to lose those limited number of hydrogen bonds that they have in the first place. And because these water molecules remain in their location. They don't move, they stand their ground. When we apply a force, those molecules still don't want to move. They don't want to break those bonds. And so that's exactly why it has a high surface tension because when we apply a force, they, those surface molecules will apply a force back and that's what surface tension is. So when we add our detergent, that decreases the surface tension. Why? 
Well, what we basically do when we add our detergent into our liquid is we replace the surface water molecules with our detergent molecules. So this is the arrangement that we basically have. So what happens is on the surface, instead of having the water molecules, we now have our detergent molecules. And these hydro, uh, hydrophilic polar heads shown in blue will orient and interact with the water molecules, but the hydrophobic tails, the nonpolar green tails, will basically orient away from the water molecules and to the air. So we essentially replace our water molecules on the surface with these hydrophobic, hydrophilic detergent molecules. And now all these water molecules are found inside the liquid and they can easily move about because as we said earlier, once the water molecules are deep inside our liquid, uh, beneath the surface, they can move about freely because by moving about, they're not losing any net amount of hydrogen bonds. So adding detergent molecules will cause them to align along the surface so that their polar sections point inward towards the water as shown in this diagram and their nonpolar green tails, hydrophobic tails, point towards the air. Now, the water molecules near the surface now feel much more comfortable because they can interact with the polar heads of our detergent. Urgent. And this means when we apply a force onto the surface of that liquid, because these water molecules feel much more comfortable, they're not constrained anymore and they can move around freely. When we apply a force, they will have no problem moving around that force. And that's exactly why the surface tension drops. So this means that the water molecules can rotate and move much more freely than before and this lowers their ability to withstand any force because once we apply force, they simply move around that force and so our surface tension drops. So by adding a detergent, a, a molecule that contains hydrophobic and hydrophilic properties into our water, into our liquid, we decrease our surface tension as a result of this concept. And this is exactly what happens inside the alveoli of our lungs. So within the lungs are microscopic balloon-like structures called alveoli. Now, they resemble balloons in that we actually have to apply a certain pressure to inflate them. But when we release that pressure, when the pressure is removed, the elasticity of our balloons causes them to actually deflate and, retur and uh, return back to their original shape. So let's take a look at the following uh, microscopic section. So this is our bronchiole and the bronchiole eventually connects to the space and around the space we have many of these alveoli. So if we zoom in on a single alveolus, we basically get the following diagram. So inside this region we have air, we have carbon dioxide and we have oxygen. Now this purple section is the wall of the alveoli. Uh, of the alveolus, so it's the alveolar wall, uh, uh, wall. And now within the wall, within the inside portion of the wall, between the wall and the air, we have this layer of fluid we call the alveolar fluid. And this is a polar fluid, just like this water is a polar fluid. So we have this layer of fluid known as the alveolar fluid that is polar. Now, this, because it's polar, it basically has a high surface tension. So just like water has a high surface tension, this fluid also has a high surface tension. Now, what that means is, because the fluid has a high surface tension, when we actually apply a pressure, when we breathe inside these alve uh, alveoli, we actually need to breathe, we need to create a high pressure to expand them, to inflate them because of the high surface tension of our fluid. 
and that means without any type of detergent, without any type of surfactant, which is basically a detergent inside the alveoli, we have to apply a high pressure to inflate our alveoli found within our lungs. So what the pulmonary surfactant does is it basically decreases the surface tension of the fluid and it, uh, and it makes it much easier for us to actually breathe in and apply a smaller pressure to inflate those balloon-like structures, our alveoli. So pulmonary surfactant is a substance that resembles our detergent because it consists of about 90% of phospholipids and it also contains about 10% protein. So that means it contains polar hydrophilic and non-polar hydrophobic region so these tiny molecules shown here are basically our surfactant molecules so we have the non-polar hydrophobic tail and the polar hydrophil uh, hydrophilic head so in the same way that we discussed here the head of the surfactant <coughs> the head of the surfactant basically interacts with the surface of our fluid, but the tail points away towards our air found within this cavity. So the wall of the alveolus is lined with the polar fluid that contains a high surface tension. This means that because of the high surface tension, we require a relatively high pressure to expand and inflate those uh, balloon-like structures when we basically inhale our air. Now by mixing the surfactant into that fluid and by the way the surfactant is produced by a specialized type of cell inside the lungs known as the alveolar type 2 cells, by mixing the surfactant, which is our detergent, with the fluid, we decrease the surface tension as a result of what we discussed earlier. And by, uh, by decreasing the surface tension, we make it much easier for ourselves to actually inflate those alveoli. So we decrease the pressure that is needed to expand the alveoli during the process of inhalation. Now, what it also does is it basically decreases the recoil ability of our alveoli. And what that means is when we exhale, when the air basically leaves the alveoli, these alveoli don't actually uh, collapse onto themselves because if they collapse, that means we're going to need a much greater pressure to actually inflate them back to their original position. So the surfactant also prevents the alveoli from collapsing onto themselves during the process of exhalation.